What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the business breakthrough. In today's business breakthrough, I sit down with Carlos Baca again. So this is part two for him. Uh, really, you know, just a recap on what we went over on the first breakthrough session I did with him. Where we are now. His big hurdle in the beginning was hiring. So he's made some good decisions going forward. However, the the greatest thing I can do for somebody is help them see maybe their blind spots. And in this episode, actually, there was a big blind spot that I helped him see uh, to potentially prevent a really big problem. So Carlos is a great guy, a great sport, someone that really wants to take their business to the next level. So in this episode, I uh, really just give him that extra push that he needs to make the right decisions going forward with his hiring. So I'm really excited for you to listen to this episode and it starts now. The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right. They're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener. It's so much better. And that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time. And that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat. And that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets podcast. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Business Breakthrough. I have Carlos back. He came in on a breakthrough session. I think it was about a month ago, right? Around that time? Just about, yeah. Awesome. And one of the big things we spoke about was hiring. You know, we did the hiring form. We went through the process. You were in a position where you were looking for some quality help. Has anything changed since the last time we spoke? And and what's changed? Yeah. Um, so I got the uh, I got some some team going. I got a little bit of a crew going right now. Um, I ended up using Indeed, but I got pretty lucky in that um, the person that was working for me before kind of came back in the picture. Oh, not for me, but with me. Okay. Came back in the picture, and now she's working for me. Uh, okay. So now I got myself a little foreman and I'm talking nice. to some people right now as well too. Okay. On the indeed, um, getting ready to hire them as well too for my next job. Got you. So you you're starting to build up that momentum and just yeah. obviously, you know, look, it's been a month. There's no rush to building a foundation, right? I mean, if yeah. you built a, a skyscraper, you know, I mean, yeah, there's a time frame that's acceptable, but ultimately if they say, Hey man, we got to make sure this foundation is strong before we grow it, that could take three to six months of getting quality help. Right. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I bet you're starting to see that. That's not so much about how fast, but it's about how, how much quality of the people that are working for you. Is that, is that true? Definitely. Definitely. Sorry. I'm my, 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 my. No, that's all right. So yeah, so, that's definitely what it is right now. I'm seeing just kind of slowing things down. I had a real problem of kind of going a thousand miles per hour and thinking it's progress when really it's just wasting my time. Really. I I'm, I'm, was confusing, you know, being busy with being very active and being pretty progressive, but it's, it was slowing me down though. So you were, you were on the treadmill. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that happens, man. So, you know, in terms of, so, so, you know, we spent a lot of time on the last breakthrough talk and hiring, and I think you get it now. I don't yeah. think we need to talk about that anymore. Let's try to venture into some other areas here because I want to give you something in terms of the, the the balance that you have to have, right? So when you hire good people, you know, they don't just hang out. You got to put them to work. You got to find work. So let's talk either, you know, sales, marketing, or production. What are those areas you feel that you would like to elaborate on in this in this breakthrough session? What was it sales? Sales, marketing, or production? I would think maybe marketing. Um I, okay. I literally just started my TikTok for the painting. Okay. Um, what I want to do is kind of transition a little bit into kind of being more informative, I guess, on my Instagram and, and on my TikTok. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. Is, is TikTok marketing or is it branding? That's why I guess I'm confused on that. I don't know, really. TikTok is branding. Okay. okay. More branding. It's, it's getting people to see. Marketing. They go hand in hand, right? I mean, you know, marketing is essentially, you know, like think of marketing as an offer, right? Like branding is getting your name out there, showing, you know, showing how you're doing things like marketing is, Hey, we do this, call us because of this, right? Does that make sense? A little bit different. So 
just know when you're doing that, you're branding, which is great. Branding is a precursor to marketing, right? Okay. So you're getting people to know your painting company. I love that. And I, and I also want you to also understand though, that the majority of your customers are ages 35 to 65, right? Yeah. So they're not on TikTok, are they? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, they might be They're, you know, but at the end of the day, I feel like they're going to adopt Instagram before they adopt TikTok. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. Like, too. you know, but my, my thing is, is a like, good idea, man. And, and it's fun. It gets the team involved. You can put it on Facebook. Like you can take those TikTok videos, get them on Facebook. It's a good thing to be doing. Just know that marketing is a little bit different in terms right. of going after your specific market. Right. So we got to find out how to get the people that we work for maybe in 10 years after all those awesome TikToks you have, you know, they're going to want to reach out to you because they've seen them and that you've made them laugh and they're interested, but we got to find out how we attract our market. And right now, TikTok isn't it. Instagram no. isn't even it right now. I mean, the people who are on Instagram aren't yet home buyers, <laughs> you know, they're, they're getting there. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're getting there maybe within the next 10 years, you know, and you'll get some leads from, you know, look, you want my Instagram strategy that I, that I think maybe you should try is yeah. local hashtags, right? So if you go and look up realtor in your area, so like, look up, what's the name of your town? Are you in little rock? Yeah. Little rock. So little rock realty, little rock homes, little rock, you know, home buyer, little, like look up those. Uh, yeah. Try to touch base with the realtors. Those are the ones you want to do TikToks and attract, right? So when they see your fun video yeah. on there, like, oh my God, that's awesome. I got to introduce them to my customers who are 60 plus, right? Yeah. So, so think of it like that. TikTok's a good strategy, right? But you want to try to attract the people that are on those platforms, but you have to get them to see you first. So that's why I'm saying build a network of your local real estate market, your local other professionals who are using Instagram for their business, but yeah. using it to give them a little more confidence to refer you through those TikToks, through those Instagram videos. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So it's like, so just don't think that you're using TikTok to go after your consumer. You right. are, but again, your consumer, your market isn't quite ready, but right. it can build trust with other local professionals. It's kind of like a building your well before you're thirsty, I guess. Love that. Yeah. That's it. So build your well before you're thirsty and have that well ready to go for when the time comes. But in the meantime, you can go to those hashtags and yeah. find people, you know, even if you just do little rock, like photos on there, get your local area to know your account and be like, Oh wow. A really fun painting business. Right. You know? Yeah. So just, just let's, let's, you know, we'll seize that area, but I think you got the point on that aspect, yeah. right? All right. So let's talk about your job types. I know that you do interior, exterior painting. Are you doing cabinets right now? Yeah. A lot of cabinets, a lot of cabinets. Would you say that you're heavily leaning toward cabinets or you, I mean, what would you say the percentages interior, exterior right. painting versus cabinets? Just two of them. What would you say the percentages? Uh, maybe 40%, well, 30% cabinets and interior right now. It's okay. pretty cold outside. So once it's warming up, maybe I think, Probably next month, I'll start picking up more exteriors, but all right, right now, pretty much all interior. All right. So I know you listen to the pot. I know you've heard me say this. You're running multiple businesses right now. Uh, there's very successful cabinet coding companies that only do cabinets. They're perfect at it. And the market that they attract, they have the confidence to say what? All we do is cabinets. We are yeah. cabinet professionals. Not only can do they do cabinets, they do refacing. They do a lot of things for cabinets. They have a system down. They have a shop. They have pricing down to a T and they're phenomenal and they're making a lot of money and you're doing interior painting, which is taking away from your ability to do cabinets. You're doing exterior painting, which is taking away from your ability to do cabinets and market for cabinets and, and capitalize on this craving of the market that they want their kitchens painted. All right. Yeah. It's no yeah. secret, bro. It's, it's, it's a <laughs> boom in business. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But you, you got to pick one in the yeah. initially you have to pick one. Right. And I, I, I sat down with a good friend of mine, Valentino, his friend, Leon, it was an episode we did a breakthrough where they were both. Did you hear that one? Did you have a chance to drop in on that one? We, um, I don't know the names normally, but in, Insta cabinets, it was the cabinet. Insta oh, not yet. No, no, no. Okay. So Valent, it's a good episode to check out, but essentially Valentino built a painting business first. Okay. That, that is operating at full capacity. He took on a couple cabinet jobs, but he realized that he should separate them. 
Yeah. You know, and I know that we, we feel that like, I mean, it's just like, cause it's hard to create consistency yeah. and it's hard to market, right? If you just say, well, we do this, 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 and this, that doesn't attract the people who want that one specific task. Yeah. The person who does do that one specific task is going to beat you out. Right. So if a drywall guy comes in and tells my customer that they're going to paint their whole house, I say, well, he's a drywall professional. What does he know about painting yeah. a whole house? You sure? I mean, we do this every day. I mean, we have this system down pat. So just understand that marketing goes hand in hand with your systems. Predictability, right? If you spend all this money on marketing and you're not targeting anyone specifically, what happens? Pointless. Waste of money. Waste of money. Yeah. I think you should revitalize your business and only take on either cabinets or interior exterior painting. I chose to do exterior interior painting. I don't like cabinets. <laughs> it's not my style. Yeah. But we're perfect at it. We're great at what we do. And yeah. if a company comes in and says they do cabinets, I'll say, well, that's nice, but we just focus on interior exterior painting. We have a little bit of leverage there. And yeah. not only that, we're targeting one market, right? So think about it this way. Whenever a market has a desire for something, they have a need. Yeah. Okay. It's like, I'm moving into a house. I need the house painted. Yeah, well, they yeah. might not need the cabinets painted. So like you can't really attract that individual who just wants interior painting done because you're going to be busy doing cabinets somewhere where you could have capitalized on that. And not only that, it makes it easy for your team members because we both know that they're totally different processes, right? Oh yeah. I mean, definitely the timing, the sanding, the different tannins in the woods, the different types of cabinets from mica Oak. Yeah. I mean, every one of them has a different, different world. I mean, you could just be a cabinet. You can niche down so deep that you become a cabinet coating company that only does oak cabinets unpainted. That's it. Oh, sorry. It's a, you know, it's a, I don't know, a, a, a juniper. I don't know if that's a tree. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't really make you get the point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, oh, oh, sorry. We only take oak cabinets, right? So you can be that type of, of narrow down because you're, you have a system for oak cabinets. So it just, it's important for you to do this. Now I'm not saying, bro, that you can't extend out, but again, you don't have anything predictable yet. You have no system, right? You're just taking, yeah. you know, all these sorts of different jobs. And it sounds like you like cabinets. So I'm thinking your move should be cabinets only, bro. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and they feel pretty like, good. Like, I've been learning to charge a little better. And uh, how many other companies in your area are only doing cabinets? I haven't checked. I don't think anybody. Okay. You need to check number one and you're going to be surprised because, well, you're not going to be surprised. There's nobody else doing it. Probably no. cabinets only very rare. Yeah. You have it's only, and you're going to dominate the market. How many painting contractors are you competing with? A lot. Oh, out here, that's uh, the big one, Sorta Pro. Yeah. They do uh, everything. That's not, yeah. you know, and they're, they're a franchise. So it's like, you know, yeah. people, people tend not tend to lean more toward the local guys for our, our business. You know, yeah. it's not like they're going to Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, whatever, dude. You know, so, but I'm just talking about like, remember, if you go to a house and you try to give a bid, you're, you're in competition because they do the same things you do. They're not yeah. doing business breakthroughs and they're not usually, you know, in a position where they can be selective of the type of jobs that they take. Yeah. Right. So by default, they do exactly what you're currently doing. Yeah. But if you switch gears and you only do cabinets, what happens? You you're on an Island. Yeah. I did pretty good because right now um, I'm doing a cabinet for the entire family. Pretty much. I started off with the mom. And Good. then she recommended me to her daughter and then her daughter recommended me to her sister. Yeah. But here's the secret, you know? So if the daughter goes, Carlos, thank you. I'm so excited for you to do my cabinets. Listen, we've been really struggling getting somebody to come in and paint the garage walls and my bedroom. Would you mind doing it? What are you going to say? Right now I got to say, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be your issue until you get comfortable enough to say no to that. Cause what is it going to do? It's going to take away from your, main job right yeah. your your predictability your system your system yeah and you can't have that because that takes away from potential cabinet jobs you see what i'm saying yeah. and right now you're still working bro so ultimately anytime you're on those jobs you know that you're not building your business you're just sustaining it yeah. okay yeah. remember businesses are growing or dying and the sustaining is dying because you're not bringing in more money you're not marketing you're not selling you're not estimating you're not doing all these things that you need to be doing yeah. The system allows you to create predictability. You have a good person that you just, you found. Yeah. Are they good at spraying cabinet doors? No, not yet. Okay. So yeah. what's, have you been 
training them to do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm starting him off just primering, just straight priming first. Okay. Before we go on moving into the actual coding. So All right. You, you know. Yeah. So you need to re- remember, you need to replace yourself now. This was phase two. Phase one is finding somebody you can trust at the house. Can you trust this person at the house? Yes, yeah, definitely. Perfect. Yeah. What's phase two? Getting them to do what you would be able to do to the standard of which you would do it. Maybe yeah. start with just frames. Okay. Yeah. Don't take your time. I, start start with I, frames. I definitely. I had her um this week. I actually had her taking care of some jobs. So just to kind of see how it would be, um, I left her at a specific job while I was doing some job bids and um, we're still in the learning process for sure. Definitely. It's gonna take time, But that's good that we already know, you know, little by little. But like I said, you know, if you're training somebody to do cabinets, right. Yeah. What happens when you spend the next two weeks doing exterior and interior painting, they lose, they that, lo- they lose that muscle that you're trying to develop. If you don't go to the gym for two weeks, you lose that muscle. Right. So it's like, this is your job as a business owner to set a direction. Yeah. If you keep changing it up, you're not going to get anywhere. I mean, because again, this individual needs to be doing cabinets every freaking day to get yeah. good at it. Like, yeah. or you're going to continue to feel like you can't trust this person to paint them because you keep pulling them off of the job. Keep taking sense. them out of the gym. Yeah. You know, like you got to build this person up. Obviously, you know, at this point, bro, you've got to stop painting or you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. How nice the- would it be? How nice would it be? Man, beautiful. 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 My, legs, my legs are killing me right now. Your legs but- are killing you. you. If somebody called you and asked you to do an estimate right now, you'd be grudgingly do it because you're tired. Yeah. I got one at 1230. <laughs> and you're, and you're, you're like, man, like I got to go do this estimate instead of I get to go do this estimate yeah. because you're fresh, you're ready. And, and how does that convey to the customer? Right? Yeah. They how does that how does that convey to them? They can tell you're tired. Yeah. They can see in your eyes, you know. In your eyes, like you're not enthusiastic. You can't, you don't have the energy to go in there and negotiate to win the yeah. job. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. and all that comes down to is you're stretched too thin. And yes. we and and I knew this was coming because that's why I reached out to you to, to do this again, because I knew that we have a couple more phases to hit for you. First yeah. phase was get somebody you can trust. We can't move anywhere unless we got an ACE. I call it an ACE. You know, it's that one person that can communicate well to the customer. You're also very fortunate. This person can also paint and they're interested in learning the trade. Yeah. But you've got to protect their growth by what? Not taking on a bunch of things. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of what happened this last week. We took on a job that I had no business doing, but once again, I'm just stuck in a place where I feel like, I just got to get the fortitude just to start saying no, I guess. All right. And, so and, let me, let's, yeah. let's, hey, Carlos, can you paint my ceiling? No. Okay. Why not? We only paint walls and trim. Perfect. Right. And then eventually that'll be, we only, sorry, we only offer cabinet refinishing services at this time. Yeah. Well, why, why do you only offer cabinet refinishing services? Cause you're going to get asked. Yeah. We were the, we do we're the best at what we do. And we like to yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. So that so we like to focus on what we're good at. We don't put our name on things that we don't feel like would be to the standard of which we would both expect. Exactly. Yeah, right. I see why now my dad only painted exterior houses and it makes sense now. We were the best at that and I guess I, I see it now. The best at that and be the best at one thing and the market will attract to you. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I need my AC fixed, do you think I'm going to call a landscaping company? Definitely not. As a guy that told me when he was doing my landscaping that he fixes ACs on the side. No. You really think I'm going to give that? To <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to risk it. Yeah. I mean, he might be cheaper, but I want the specialist. Let's talk a little more serious. If you got a heart problem. You're going to go to the freaking the podiatrist. <laughs> no, no, man. You got to go to the person who's, who's good at it. Right. There's a market that understands that as a buyer, we want specialists. Yeah. Okay. Be a specialist. Now, again, it doesn't have to be cabinets. You might say, you know what? This is a little too hard to train somebody up. I'm going to have to get a shop. I got to do a lot. Let me just do interior. Cool. Yeah. Whatever. Do interior for the next six to eight months. Maybe your person's getting a little stressed out because it's kind of hard to do those cabinets. And it's yeah. something that you're seeing in her is like, oh man, she's getting tired every day, sanding them all. Right? Yeah. Maybe it's not worth it. Then stop taking cabinet jobs. You see what yeah. I'm saying? You see, just niche down, man. Find that system that frees you when you're independent of it. 
then you can add things. Like for me, I got, you know, you know, I do the interior exterior painting. My father-in-law is a carpenter. So what did I do by default? I, I started taking baseboard, crown molding, wainscoting, all that stuff. Just because we are established enough to take that. And it's not, I don't have to be there. Yeah. You know, sub that out, I guess I sub that out. Exactly. Yeah. See? So it's, that's going to be your next step is really figuring out what you want to specialize in. Now, big trick behind all this. Okay. This is going to be the big one. Your marketing is going to give you the confidence to do this. So see how it comes around yeah. because you see how all that comes around is that if you market to the world that you do everything, what are you going to get? Everything. Yeah. If you don't do marketing, you just rely on word of mouth. What happens? You stay stagnant as well too. Stay stagnant as well. You wind up taking whatever the word of mouth asks for because you have no confidence in your marketing. For me, I have confidence in my marketing. I use Home Advisor. I use Facebook. I use Google. Number one, I say no a lot. I, I posted something on Instagram the other day. I get those text messages all the time from my office yeah. admin. Hey, <laughs> do we do, do, we do uh, church roofs? Do we do office buildings? Do we do this? And she knows the answer is no, but she always checks. And I appreciate that. But answer is no, unfortunately not. No, we don't. Thank you very much for asking. We just paint houses. I got a call today. Tanner, did you get my bid for the new car wash that's going up down the road? No, sir. Unfortunately, we only paint houses. I don't care about money. I care about my freedom and my time and my system. I yeah. don't care. Don't let the money pull you, man. That money is going to pull you and, and, and you're going to be in. What, what position are you in right now? What'd you do last week? Slave to my own self. <laughs> Slave. And what time did you get home at night? Man, last night I got home late. I went like maybe close to seven. So I had to do finish a job. Then I had to go, you know, set up some cabinets for the client that I'm doing. Yeah. I do, I'm yeah. Doing it was cut. almost better working for somebody, wasn't it? Uh, sometimes I wish I was. <laughs> wow. And you started a business for a better life for your family, for your loved ones, for your wife. She's texting you, hey, dinner's in the microwave, Carlos. Yeah. You did that because you took the freaking job. Yeah. You can't have it. So niche down, right? Say no. Don't worry about the money. If you have good marketing, use, like I said, remember we talked about this, use Home Advisor, use Angie's List, use these things. Don't care. Don't listen to what everyone says about them. I say it's good. I okay? just, They're not I paying me. I promise. They should, though. <laughs> I do have Angie's list and I literally just got on to my Google business page. I just got it loaded up and everything too. So beautiful. So you got that system set up and that's the confidence that you have. Okay. I, I know that if I turn home advisor on, I'm going to get exterior interior painting leads. Yeah. I'm, they're not going to send me cabinet jobs. Yeah. I don't exactly. want them. Right. There's been yeah. nothing like this in the history of trades, bro. <laughs> we got to take advantage of it. It's amazing. It's yeah. incredible. Okay. That we only get people that have the jobs we want. That's cool, man. So we got to take advantage of it and it's going to free you. Freedom is the next step. You found the person you trust, get yeah. somebody to work with them. Now you should remember, I pushed you to hire that person, which is, it looks like you did. You yeah. got somebody else that you can put under that person. I'm looking at right now from indeed, actually, um, he's person keeps on getting, you know, contacting me. So I'm really happy about that. Good. Uh, I'm going to start them off. I'm starting this cabinet job Monday. Okay. So I'm thinking of, um, you know, starting them off together and see how they work together. Love and it. Beautiful. My plan is to. So have you called this individual yet? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if I have. I, you guys I have been messaging that. on Indeed? Yes. Yes. We're messaging. Okay. So, so, so what, what's today? Friday? Yeah. Yes. Bro, you're going to break one of my golden rules, man. What's that? You never hire without meeting somebody. Never. That's right. You have, okay. you, know, you know that, bro. You know I'm That's coming right. at you right now. You After your estimate, you call this guy right now. You're going to do a phone interview. Okay. Right? And you're going to ask him and, and get to know him a little bit. And okay. then if it's going well, you say, listen, I need to meet with you before we bring you on the job. Remember, that's the foundation. We don't just have a business where we just bring whoever in. Do you just invite people in your house? No. You know? no. Would you message somebody off a of Craigslist and say, come sit at my dinner table? Why would you do that to your customers? Yeah. That's don't do that, bro. You got to yeah. call that individual after this call. Start off with a phone interview. Say, hey, man, I just want to get to know you a little bit. We're going to do a little phone interview. Do you have a few minutes? Yeah, I do. Great. You message him and say, hey, we're going to set up a phone interview if you want. Yeah, yeah. Do that phone interview. Ask a couple questions. Listen to his personality. Listen to the things he's saying. Say, great, man. The next phase in our hiring process is an in-person interview. Can you meet me at the Starbucks in, in today? Or can you meet me tomorrow morning? Yeah. You're a business owner now, Carlos. 
you got to do this not only for your, your business, but for your customers. Yeah. You know, don't waste your time with somebody and don't, don't just bring someone to the job. We don't do that anymore, man. You're going to have a successful business, but this is the stuff that it requires. So yeah. what, what's the next step? I got to call this guy, message call him or guy. call him, message him, get the phone interview, right. going, and then, phone interview. And then what? Go to Starbucks or somewhere. Uh, Starbucks, something real quick, man. 30 minutes. Hey man, thanks for meeting me, man. I just want to get to know you a little bit. Pay attention. If this guy comes up and he looks like he's what, if he's whacked out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd rather deal with that at Starbucks than at the job site. House. Yeah. So we got to make sure he's, he's, he's legitimate and then say, look, all right, man, you know what? This was a great conversation. We want to bring you on. I'm going to do a working interview with you. You get one week with us. I'll pay you at the end of the week. I'll decide whether or not you come with us full time. That's easy, man. That, that wasn't much. Just a yeah. little structure there gives them something to attain. Remember I said, bro, if people feel like your business is something to attain, they will value it as something to keep. Yeah. You get it? Yes. But guess what? If it was no entry, there was no barrier of entry. It's just it as would, easy to yeah. walk out as it is to walk in. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't create that low standard. Make the standard a little bit higher for your, that, that's, that's major, bro. I think Definitely. there's a reason we talked today because I don't want you to do that anymore. That's why you're in this position. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let's get after it. All right, man. I'm going to leave you with that because this is urgent. I want you to take care of it. Um, I hope, was this yeah, helpful? Right was it helpful? That was this yes, helpful? Man. Thank you so much. I do appreciate these, these talks, always, man. Thank always, you. man. Text me, call me, whatever you need, man. If you have some questions about this interview, but call him right now, get that set up. Maybe do it after your estimate today. So you guys yeah. can get rocking. All right, bro. Okay, yeah, man. Thank Talk you. you soon. Bye, bye Hey, I just want to take a second to thank you for joining me here on the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Um, I'm just going to take this opportunity to let you know that my passion is coaching people, helping people. Um, I've changed my Instagram name to at contractor coach. And I did that because that is my passion. I want to help you. So please reach out to me. If you have an issue going on in your business, send me an email, find me on Instagram, message me, and let's do a breakthrough session. I want to work through your problems in your business to help you get to that next level. And, and one thing that I always say is this, you know, the difference between those that get over the humps and the hurdles in business is just a change in perspective. And that's what I plan to offer you. So get with me, message me, allow me to help you take your business to the next level.